The Ten Commandments of God are God's moral code, also known as God's law. The law is the tool God uses to demonstrate how we humans simply don't measure up to His holy standards. You can't keep the Ten Commandments. No one can. Our inability to keep the Ten Commandments is a glaring example of our need for a Savior. Praise God for sending His Son to die on our behalf so that we may have eternal life by believing in Him. But exactly what are the Ten Commandments and how are they important? Let's take a look. The Bible informs us that if we've broken just one of the Ten Commandments, we've broken them all and are therefore not considered righteous in the eyes of God. The Bible calls this sin and the penalty for sin is the loss of our eternal existence. In other words, we are appointed a time to die because of our sin. Fortunately, our loving God provided us with a Savior who can save us from our sin and restore our eternal life. If we trust Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are no longer under the law because we have been saved by the grace of God. However, that doesn't mean we ignore the Ten Commandments. It means we are more aware of them than ever before. Because if we are true believers, our central purpose in life is to follow the teachings of Jesus. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? May it never be. Let's take a look at the Ten Commandments one by one so that we can understand why they are central to the teachings of Jesus. The first four commandments are focused on our relationship with God. The first commandment is, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. When Jesus was asked which of the laws is the most important, he responded this way, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. Your personal relationship with God is by far the most important aspect of your life as a Christian believer. The world we live in is full of people who tend to make things other than God their central focus. Money, power, personal pleasure are often worshipped in place of God. The first commandment tells us there is to be no other God worshipped. Jesus tells us we are to love our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. The second commandment is, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Our Creator is a living God, not an inanimate object such as a statue or painting. Believers in Jesus Christ are empowered by the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of every believer. It is that Spirit of God that we are to worship, not man-made objects. Jesus put it this way, God is Spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The third commandment is, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. If you honestly believe that God is the creator of all things, how could you use His name as an ordinary curse word or statement of amazement or simply toss it out as an everyday figure of speech? This is the Lord your God, whom you love with all your heart, soul, and mind. For in Him we live, and move, and exist. The fourth commandment is, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Setting apart one day a week to worship God is so important that God included it in His top ten list. You don't have to go far in the Bible to learn Satan is actively pushing people away from God. The Bible calls Satan the God of this world. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, that they may not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Worshiping together is an important aspect of our battle against Satan and his deception. The mere fact that believers spend time together in fellowship builds a wall around them that protects and defends against the schemes of the devil. Commandments 5 through 10 focus on our relationship with other people. The fifth commandment is, Honor thy father and mother. Families are the foundation of great societies. Strong families build strong societies. When families fail, the results begin to travel beyond the family and into the community. Understanding the importance of strong families is the message God is delivering in this commandment. The sixth commandment is, Thou shalt not murder. Human life is precious. Destroying God's creation is wrong. 
The Bible has a lot to say about vengeance and hate for your fellow man. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. The seventh commandment is thou shall not commit adultery. Man and woman were designed to be together. This relationship is clearly established in the first book of the Bible. The book of Proverbs has some profound wisdom on this subject. The one who commits adultery with a woman is lacking sense. He who would destroy himself does it. The eighth commandment is thou shall not steal. Most people understand that God's expectation for his people is that they live a life of generosity rather than greed. A follower of Jesus Christ should be focused on giving and serving and be unimpressed by material possessions. Godly love defeats the desire to steal. The believer's treasure is not something that can be acquired here on this earth. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal. The ninth commandment is thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Truth is a prominent aspect of God's character. In our secular society, almost everyone tries to balance the risk of being caught against the believed reward of lying. It's not at all difficult to find a business, organization, or individual who is involved in some kind of deceit. The world we live in is often a great insult to God. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal faithfully are His delight. The final tenth commandment is, Thou shalt not covet anything that is thy neighbor's. The tenth commandment is not so much about what we should do in our life, but goes deeper by considering what we should think. God is probably more concerned with our thoughts than our actions because our motives define everything we do. Jesus offered a long list of negative thoughts that can defile a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed the evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting and wickedness, as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from within and defile the man. When we crave or desire that which we do not possess, we defile our heart and turn away from God. When Jesus was asked which of the laws is most important, you may remember he said, we must love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. And then he went further to suggest a second most important commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Envy of your neighbor's possession is not a result of love. If we truly love God and our neighbor, we are thankful for all that God has provided and pleased by our neighbor's good fortune. There is no need to desire more for ourselves if we believe that God has given us all that we need and will continue to do so as long as we place our trust in Him. God wants us to be concerned with others and not ourselves. God wants our heart focused on giving, not receiving. The Ten Commandments reflect the nature of God and paint a clear picture of His desire for us all to spend our time here on this earth fully immersed in God's love worshiping Him and sharing His love with everyone around us. What are the Ten Commandments of God? They are a mirror reflecting the light of truth back into our hearts.